Mercy the Mad here, and today we've got an Eltharian guide on how to basically beat Tyrion into submission in order to get a early confederation with Tyrion, um, which will set you up to then confederate all of the other legendary lords for the High Elf roster and um, have your kind of ultimate High Elf campaign with everything you could possibly have in there. Unlike my other guides, this one's not going to be a step-by-step -step guide. It's just going to give you an overview, and you may not be successful the first time, but it is a valid it is a valid technique, and you will be able to confederate Tyrion. As long as you can make enough money and you can get enough influence, and you don't have any bad luck, like lose any bad battles or anything like that. Turn one, you want to attack Eltharian's starting enemy, the Top Knots Lord. You want to fight this battle manually. The goal is to keep casualties low and also use the Warden's Cage ability to capture the enemy Lord. Once you're in position, you can start the battle with the Ember Storm ability from the Arcane Phoenix to do some AoE damage to the Orcs. Ember Storm has quite a long cooldown, so you want to get one cast straight away so you can hopefully cast one or two more during the battle once the Orcs are clumped up. You can use Eltharian's heal ability early on to try to minimize casualties on the infantry and later on to uh, replenish uh, Eltharian and the Phoenix's hit points before the end of the battle. His Soul Quench ability also can do good damage if fired laterally down the line of enemy infantry troops. Engage the enemy infantry with Eltharian, but avoid the enemy Lord as he won't trade well with the Orc leader. Instead, engage the Orc Lord with the Arcane Phoenix. The Arcane Phoenix should do good damage and make short work of him. When the Orc Warboss's health gets low, move Eltharian in to double team him along with the Arcane Phoenix. And then, when he's just about to die, cast the Warden's Cage ability on him. Warden's Cage ability gives a big debuff to melee defense, so the two powerful melee fighters should be able to finish him off quickly. Make sure they kill him before the timer runs out on Warden's Cage so you can capture the Lord. After pretty much every battle that you fight in this run, you're going to want to choose Ransom Captives, as a little bit of extra money and that plus one influence per, ter per turn could be critical in Confederating Tyrion. With your first captive, go into Athel Tamara and choose the Execute option. Then you want to also go and choose on the Watchers of Uress, the first option here that will give you plus one influence per turn. Follow up and destroy the Greenskin army. You don't want them to replenish over the end turn. Move back into your own territory so you can get a little replenishment. Leveling up, put all of Eltharian's points into the blue line until you get Lightning Strike. You'll need that in order to take on Tyrion. Build the Elven Gardens in Gronti Mingle. You'll need to recruit a noble hero here and send him east to find Imric so you can get him confederated before he dies. Take the Lawmaster hero called Cavill in Tory of Res and join him into Lorna's army, then attack the Greenskin army. Note, while they're in Lilius Blessing stance, both Cavill and Lorna will get an extra 20% more experience, both for the battle and for their intern experience. Fight the battle manually, and again, make sure you use the Warden's Cage ability to capture the enemy Lord. You're probably going to use your archers to do most of the damage on the Lord. And he'll, he'll move quickly out of range once he's broken, but you can use your cavalry to sort of herd him back around so that he stays in range of the archers until you whittle down his health. Get Cavill and the Lord um, close to melee range so that when you do use the Warden's Cage ability, they can finish him off in melee if necessary. Upgrade to the Altar to Loek so that you get plus two influence per turn. This guide is not a sort of step-by-step -step guaranteed type of guide. It's more a um, explanation of the strategies that you have to employ in order to get Tyrion in this way. Since you don't know at this point exactly how much money and influence you're going to need, you just want to take every opportunity to get as much influence and as much money as you can in every situation. Don't follow up and destroy the Greenskin army. Just recruit three more archers and uh, leave it until next turn. Then the Greenskin army will recruit a new lord, which you can try capturing again for more warden supplies and influence. Destroy the barracks. You don't need that. Turn two. Take Trilinia with Lorna's army. If the Lord has joined the garrison, then try to capture the Lord again for extra Warden supplies and more influence. After the battle, occupy the settlement. If you do manage to capture the Lord, probably just execute him again to get the maximum amount of influence. Recruit three more archers into Lorna's army. At this point, you can disband the spearmen, but keep the Illyrian Reaver archers. Their speed can be useful hurting enemy lords in order to capture them with Warden's Cage. I built the growth building, but I think it's actually better to build the Alvin Craftsman to get the extra income. It'll pay for itself within nine turns and then start increasing your gold. 
from this point on, every building that you, you build or investment that you make, you want to ensure that it's going to turn a profit before turn 20. We want to confederate Tyrion around turn 20 to 25. So every decision you make should be towards maximizing the amount of gold and influence that you can get by turn 20. In this run, I chose to take Galvaraz for some extra gold and influence for Altharion. Although you don't have any siege attacker units, just uh, start building some siege engines and then the garrison will sally out and attack you over the end turn so you'll be able to take it before next turn anyway. You can start checking diplomacy at this point. Basically your goal is to build up your diplomacy starting with trade agreements with all the other elven factions except Tyrion. Don't take any agreements with Tyrion because you're going to be declaring war on him later and you'll lose extra relations with him if you have to break a uh, agreement. The top knots will sally out over the end turn. Although the balance of power looks even, because you've got Altharion and the Arcane Phoenix in your army, you'll be able to easily win with auto resolve. Loot and occupy for some extra gold. I didn't do the Talisman of Hoeth quest, but it's probably a good idea. It costs 1500 gold to do the invocation of Ladriel, and you get a thousand of that back as a reward for the quest plus 10 influence, so it's essentially 500 gold for 10 influence. You've got a couple of options with Altharion. You could move outside of Galbaraz and then wait for the rebellion to spawn and then farm that. There will also be a Top Knots army coming up from the south. You can move south to meet them, attack them, possibly auto-resolve and win it. Sometimes you auto-resolve and you lose, but you capture their lord. Um, you may die. Any of those options are fine. You want to disband Eltharion's army anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Keep choosing Ransom Captives whenever it's practical to do so for that extra money. Note that the plus one influence per turn lasts for five turns, so you don't need to do it every turn in order to keep that influence flowing, as long as you do it at least once every five turns. We destroy the barracks in Galboraz. At this point, I replaced Eltharion with another Lord so I can disband him. I want to get Eltharion back over to Toy of Rest so he can take over Lorna's army. Lorna moves down to the border and then recruits three more archers. Turn four, move up next to Elis Selai. You won't have enough movement to actually attack at this turn, but just get within range. If you're worried about being attacked, you can actually stop a bit short, just stop before the bridge, and then you'll have a defensive bridge battle if you do get attacked. Your Elven Gardens in Gronti Mingle will be complete, so recruit a noble hero and send him east to locate Imric. Imric starts in the Fortress of Vorag on the Plain of Bones. Now you can demolish the Elven Gardens. Turn 5, take a lesser lie. If the Greenskin Lord's there, then capture him again with the Warden's Cage. Again, sacrifice him for the extra influence and XP. Recruit three more archers, if you think you'll need them to take the Shrine of Loic. You want to recruit more units later to buff your faction strength, but if you can get by with less for now, that'll save you money. Recommend you move your noble manually each turn. He can sometimes get stuck on enemy agents if you let him move over the end turn. Grunty Mingle won't, usually won't get captured for quite some time even though you're not defending it, so it might be worth it to build an elven craftsman there. Turn six, move just to the border of Shrine of Loic. You can recruit another three archers if you need. Keep checking diplomacy with the other elven nations. Take military access, trade, or non-aggression packs wherever you can. Uh, except for with Tyrion, don't take any agreements with Tyrion. Turn 7, you want to sack the Shrine of Loic. Again, fight it manually, capture the enemy lord, sacrifice him for influence. You don't want to occupy it because you want to keep using it as a Saxony for a few turns and uh, if possible try to capture some more of those lords to get more influence. When he's available to recruit again, put Eltharion in charge of Lorna's army so he can keep getting experience. Keep sacking the Shrine of Loic with Eltharion's army capturing as many lords as you can and also leveling up Altharion until you can take lightning strike. There's a lot of moving parts and you can choose to do it different ways, but I chose to attack Tyrion early so that the negative relations that I get from declaring war will slowly fade away over time. So I attacked him on turn 10, pretty much as soon as I got lightning strike. Now you need lightning strike to be able to split his two armies. I destroyed Tyrion's army with lightning strike and then for some reason, instead of executing him, I indoctrinated him, which means that he comes back immediately. So Tyrion uh, takes control of the other army and then attacks me over the end turn. Exactly how this plays out will be different for everybody, but over the next few turns, you have to take out both of um, Tyrion's armies, 
then occupy Angeriel, occupy the Tower of Lycian, possibly take out another army again if they respawned, and then uh, um, siege Lothan. But, but just keep them in siege permanently so they can't recruit anything. Don't um, occupy it or sack it. Now, at around the same time that you're fighting Tyrion, you will have made diplomatic contact with Imric, probably on turn 11, and then you can start using your influence and gifts to raise his relations with you as soon as possible. I'd actually been spending influence on Tyrion earlier to keep him friendly with me until I was ready to attack him, but you could probably save that influence and just spend it on Imric instead. Over the next few turns, with a combination of multiple small gifts, um, spending influence and also taking non-aggression pact military access defensive alliance with imric you should be able to secure a confederation it's hard to say how many small gifts and how much influence it's going to cost to get imric um, in this run i had to get his relations to about 80 before he'd confederate i think i used about four or five small gifts and about four uh, influence spends Although Imric is comparatively easy to confederate, it's a bit tricky because you want to spend as little as possible on confederating Imric to save your resources for Tyrion, but then you also want to confederate Imric as fast as possible because you have to wait for the confederation cooldown of five turns before you can confederate Tyrion. Use the noble that you sent to find Imric to secure influence on any of the Eshin settlements or dwarf settlements that are nearby. You have to wait at least five turns because there's a cooldown that locks you out of any further confederations after you confederate Imric for five turns. It's hard to say exactly what you'll be facing in your campaign during those five turns. Ideally, you want to be sacking the Shrine of Loic to get more money, more influence. In my campaign, Kalidor took the Shrine of, in um, Shrine of Loic while I was busy with Tyrion, um, so I had to focus on sea treasures to get some extra money and influence. You might have to deal with the Dreadfleet that might declare war on you, or one of the other Elven factions might declare war on you. Hopefully, if you've managed your diplomacy properly, you've got pretty good relations with all of the other Elves, because you obviously you'll want to be confederating them next after Tyrion. But you need to be able to maintain the status quo, maintain the siege on Lothurn so that, so that Tyrion can't build any new forces, and then build up both your money, your influence, and your faction strength. So you're going to need Basically, I had a full stack nearly of Mistwalker units, including the Knights of Torgaval, which are quite expensive and powerful units, plus another half stack of basic archers. I guess that's about equivalent to having about three full stacks of basic archers. That's about the faction strength that you're probably going to need. Basically, if you've gotten to this point and you're able to maintain a high faction strength while you're constantly using influence to raise your relations with Tyrion, and um and saving up money so that you can bribe Tyrion, then you're basically guaranteed to get him the, the only difficulty at this point is having the economy to be able to support um, an army of the size that you need to have the faction strength to confederate him the way that i've gone about this is just one way to do it um, there's probably other viable ways uh, one option might be to keep Eltharion active in the Badlands, sacking and fighting for money over there, although your army is going to be quite costly, so that might make it difficult to make a profit. Eltharion does have the advantage that he can get access to recruit Mistwalker units, and all he has to do is upgrade um, Athel Tamara, so he doesn't have to spend a lot of money on expensive infrastructure in order to get these expensive units that he needs to raise his um, strength cap. So you can see when I confederated Tyrion, I had 89 relations with him. I was at strength rank 8. Um, you can see the 159 there from the recent events involving Etain. That's from the influence spent. That probably represents about 8 um, lots of influence spent. Uh, I'd also spent influence on Intrigue at Court actions on Tyrion earlier in the campaign, maybe around turn 4 or 5. But those ones would have expired by now, so both the relations buff that you get from them and the increase in cost to future actions um, disappears after 10 turns. So if I spend influence on turn 4, that would put the cost of the next um, spend up, um, but then on turn 14, that would be gone, or 15, that would be gone, the relations buff would be gone. 
and the cost increase that was incurred by that particular intriga court action would be gone as well. But if the cost had been increased by other intriga court actions done after that, those increases would still be in effect. Although I focused on faction strength, um, another way to go would be to focus more on money. Basically, if you don't have quite enough faction strength, you can just pay a higher bribe. But I find the faction strength tends to be the thing that's the more powerful of the two. Um, another little trick you can do to increase your faction strength on that one on the turn that you need to get the confederation is to um, summon new lords. So every province that you've got, you can recruit a new lord in. If you've quite often got a few lords that are just inactive at the moment, so they don't even cost you anything, you just pop them out temporarily for that one turn when you're doing the confederation, and that'll buff up your faction strength a bit more to make it make it a bit cheaper for you. I just wanted to do a few quick thank yous to um, everyone in the community that contributed ideas and help um, to make this video. Um, I'm not naming everybody, but just um, Andrew Tobias and Thingamabob um, both uh, did a bit of technical consulting. And um, I wanted to do a special thanks to Cryin, who was the one who kind of inspired us to get onto this mission of trying to trying to figure out how to confederate Tyrion with Altharion early, uh, because he um, was managed to do it in one of his campaigns. Um, and, uh, and he did a lot of testing uh, with alternate methods to, to try to figure out how we could get a reliable method to do this. Um, also, a big thanks to Varynx, who was the one who um, fir did first did the testing on this particular method, um, and, um, and he's done a write-up of it as well, which is available on my Discord. The description should be um, the link should be in the description below. Um, the Varynx's, Varynx's my version might be like slightly different to how I did it, but basically the same philosophy of um, bashing Tyrion uh, until he confederates with you. Full props for Varynx for actually being the first one to do this. Actually, he was the first and the second one to do it because he's done it twice already. Um, thanks also to Linksy for giving us the idea to actually bash Tyrion. Previously, it was thought that if you went to war with Tyrion, he'd sort of never forgive you and you'd never be able to get him confederated. But um, Linksy confirmed that that's incorrect because he'd actually been at war with, with Tyrion and confederated him in one of his games. So we never would have even um, tried this kind of stuff if, um, if Linksy hadn't have put us on the right path. So. Thanks, Linksy. Um, and just, yeah, thanks to everyone in the community that contributed, that helped and made suggestions, that was part of the discussion. Um, felt like this one was a real um, kind of group effort. Um, although, um, although yeah, Verix and Crane definitely uh, definitely pulled, pulled uh, more than their fair share of the way. Uh, so thanks a lot, everybody. Um, anyway, um, sorry this um, video is a little bit um, disjointed and not all of the footage is in chronological order. I just tried to sort of make it go along with the narrative, hopefully in a way that explained things pretty well. Um, but if you've got any questions or anything, um, please put them in the comments. And also, um, really interested to know if you if you try this guide, if you manage to confederate Tyrion on your first attempt um, before turn 25, um, or if, if not on your first attempt, if you, you know, first attempt fails or if you try again and you get him in your second attempt, just um, like to get that sort of data on how, how often people are able to be successful with it if you're um, willing to give it a try. Um, anyway, um, yeah, thanks a lot guys. Uh, that's all I got.